Hello everybody and welcome back to Mark on Life. This week I want to talk to you about one of the most important topics in terms of creating content in the first place. Getting your video out there into the world. So, let's get to it. Why do I have to do that? Really? Apparently, um, I've been watching videos by PewDiePie and H3H3 and loads of people and apparently I have to ask for um, likes before the video um, because obviously that makes a lot of sense. If you haven't even seen the video, surely you should already press the like button. So, um, n now. Okay. Let's go crazy! you got to press that like button right now! I need... 200 million likes right now. If I don't get 200 million likes, I'm gonna jump out the window. Woo! Press that like button now! Is that alright? So, before we go any further, as usual, I want to thank every single person that watched episode 7 of Real Perspectives, which was... The Omen. Um, if you haven't seen the film, it's amazing. The Blu-ray I just showed you is the whole trilogy, and it's really cheap at the moment, so definitely go back and check it out. It's one of the, the greatest horror films in history, um, so amazing. And anybody that watched uh, the episode uh, and liked it and shared it and all that kind of stuff, I'm very, very appreciative. If you haven't, I will put a link in the description, as always, and you can go and check it out, uh, as with all the previous episodes. Um, next time will be the last episode of this year and this season, but we will talk about that later. This week I want to talk about getting your video out there into the world, which is by far one of the most important parts of the process, because we can all make content. If you've got a camera of any kind, you can make something. Okay, it might be good, it might be bad, but we can all make something. Um, the difficulty these days is actually getting anybody to see it at all let alone hundreds, thousands, or even millions of people. Everybody I speak to seems to have the same issue. So I want to talk about that today. By no means am I an expert of this, nor do I have a big channel with lots of numbers, you know what I mean? I am in the process at the moment of learning this stuff. So this video is not an expert how-to, but more um, my thoughts on what I have learned, and if that helps anyone, fantastic and hopefully I'll be able to practice what I preach and um, increase the growth of my channel too. So it seems to me that there are three main things you can be doing to maximize getting your video out there to as many people as possible. Number one, research. Research is so important because if you don't know who you're trying to get your video out to in the first place, it's just going to get lost in a sea of a million things that no one's ever going to find. Now, obviously, the more niche your content is, the easier that can be. If you're doing um, hair and beauty and a very specific type of hair and beauty, you can target those people. If you know what age your, your demographic is, where they are, when they're going to be around, what websites they look at, what blogs, etc., etc., it's much easier to target that um, section and then uh, be able to get your video out to the people that actually want to see it. The more varied your content is, that's gonna be quite difficult. That's the problem I've had at the moment. I do comedy stuff, and so you can't really target um, people that like funny shit. That's a bit vague. So that's the reason um, my content is movie-based comedy, which brings it down a little bit. And then even more, each genre, for each video, I can then target people who like horror, people who like action, people who like romance or whatever. Um, it's still really difficult, but at least the more you know, the easier it is. So personally, I, I spend hours Googling that specific thing. So for example, for The Omen, I was um, Googling uh, reviews of the film, uh, movie blogs, horror blogs, all that kind of stuff and then post a link to the video with a little message uh, on the forums there or on the, um, on the review. Now obviously you don't want to spam people. You do want to engage in the thing itself. You don't want to just go to each one, spam the link because no one's going to look at it for the first place and you're just going to annoy people. So obviously you want to go to the 
the thing and read the review and if you liked it make a nice comment and if they engage then you can say oh and I've made something related to this as well you know it'd be great if you could check it out and start to get a dialogue going um, I also on TweetDeck which is a Twitter client have lists of each thing uh, that I do so I have um, a never-ending story uh, search, an omen search, so I can see what people are talking about. And if people are talking about it, then I know that they're a fan of the film and I can then approach them and say, hey, I like that film to, um, you know, I have a thing that I made, if you'd like to see it. So a tactical sort of research plan is very, very helpful. It will stop you wasting your time and allow you to actually target the people who might really want to see your video. Because th those are the ones that are going to be coming back. Those are the ones that might become your you know, dedicated audience. So the faster you can find them, and the more of them that you can find, the, uh, the bigger your audience is gonna grow. Number two, hack each platform. Now, before I get into any legal problem, I don't mean actual computer hacking. I mean the equivalent of life hacks. So each platform, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, etc., has their own set of algorithms, rules, things they like and things they don't like. And essentially, it all comes down to one thing in my opinion, which is each platform wants you to only use their platform, basically. Um, they don't like you going outside. They reward people that keep other people on their platform. So for example, YouTube, the most important thing on YouTube is how long people stay on YouTube. They call it session watch time or retention, that kind of thing. So if you can get people coming back every day and staying there for a long time, you win on YouTube. If people stay there for three minutes and then they leave, you don't win on YouTube. Same thing goes for Facebook. Um, you may or may not know this, um, but if you embed a uh, YouTube link in your Facebook uh, post, Facebook doesn't show it to that many people because it doesn't like people going off of Facebook. So if you have video content and you upload it to Facebook's native player, brilliant. You're going to get a load of views and Facebook will show it to everybody. But obviously that's not going to do anything for your YouTube numbers. If you put the YouTube link, it won't show it to many people and the views don't really count on YouTube. So there are ways to get around this. Um, you can post a photo rather than a um, link to the video and then put a link in one of the um, uh, comments. That's a little tip from David Walsh. Thank you, David, um, is a way to get around. And then there are other ways as well. But essentially, what you need to start thinking about when you're getting your videos out there is what would this platform like? And even more than that, more specifically, how can I make that platform money? Because that's really what it comes down to, isn't it? That platform wants to make money and the way they make money is by keeping you there. They don't make any money if you go off to loads of other things. If you have um, an Instagram photo and it takes you somewhere else or a Facebook post that takes you somewhere else, they don't make any money off that. What they make money off is keeping people here. So the, the ways that you can find to hack that platform and sort of allow that platform to feel that it's it's getting good value out of you, but still finding its way to your content is the way that you're gonna get most people and most reward for the content you have. And number three, this one's gonna seem like a bit of a rant, and I don't mean it to be. Number three is don't rely on your social networks. Don't rely on your existing personal network to get your work out there because it probably won't. Now, if you do have a thousand friends and they all help you out all the time to get your videos out there, amazing, fantastic. You are one of the lucky ones and I wish you all the best. Think about how many people you have on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Most people have a fair few. You build up people over time. Um, I think I have about six or 700 on Facebook and about 1300 on Twitter not huge numbers, but so say that's about 2,000. Some of them are obviously not gonna be real, they're gonna be bots or you know, uh, corporate accounts or something. So even if it was half of that, and it was 1,000 um, people, you think, well, that's, that's loads of people. You know, that's 1,000 views, that's 1,000 shares, likes, comments, amazing, that's enough. 
you know, it's just going to be like a viral thing, you know, two people sent to two people sent to two people, it's going to be enormous. In fact, if even 1% of those people, just 1% shared it or put it out there, that's 10 already. That's 10 shares, 10 likes. And then you see what really happens. You can put something totally arbitrary and personal, a joke, um, something really silly on your Facebook, and you'll get 50, 100 likes. And then you put something that you've worked really hard on, you've put your heart and soul into it, and you've directly asked people in, in the post, help me, help me get this out there. It's very valuable to, to me to, if you share this and like it. And nobody does. And again, I don't mean this in a bitter way. I don't mean, oh, people should help. People, your friends should help you. Well, maybe they should. But what I'm saying is it's more, if you want to get things out there, just don't rely on it. Because they may not. They may do, but they may not. And the reason why I think is why people share stuff in the first place. I went to a YouTube seminar a while back and they explained a few reasons of what makes content shareable. That's all online if you want to find it, but I distilled it into my own two reasons as to why people share stuff. Um, I think they share stuff to either inform or to entertain. So firstly, to inform people. Um, for one of two reasons. Firstly, it could be um, a purely altruistic reason. They want to show something scientific or uh, something about safety for children or something that they've read in an article. They want to put something out there because they think it might actually benefit everybody else. And that's great. Wonderful. I see that all the time. I see science articles that people have put up and think, that's really cool. I like that. Um, but then you have the other reason. And the other reason is not so wonderful, but it does happen a lot. And that is how it makes me come across. A lot of people I find post things because they want to come across as informed or worthy or intelligent or whatever it might be. And so they think subconsciously, of course, when I post this, how will people think of me? If I post this, this political um, article, I'll come, you know, people will think I'm informed. Obviously they're not thinking that because that's a, a silly thing to actually think consciously, but it's why people sort of do it. They want the, the world around them to think, yeah, I'm an informed person, I'm politically aware, I'm intelligent, I'm worthy, I'm liberal, I'm nice, etc., etc., etc. And so I'm gonna share this because that's who I am. And the other side is to entertain. Much simpler, is it funny? Is it cute? Now obviously, my content would um, be in this second category, but to be honest, most of the time it's really quick things like, um, you know, animal, little animal videos, like, these two animals shouldn't be friends. Why is a duck friends with a tiger? That kind of thing, you know what I mean? Cute little uh, puppy videos and that kind of stuff. Um, longer content technically counts, but it doesn't tend to be that shareable in this way, unless it already has a huge um, audience like Epic Rap Battles and the next one's come out and I want to share it because it's, it's the next episode and it's awesome. So you have to work out, does my content go with one of these categories? Does it inform or entertain? And would somebody share it for that purpose? Maybe, maybe not. Personally, I don't think my content is massively shareable in that instant sense. If people like it, people will share it, true. But it's not that, it doesn't make you feel worthy. It doesn't make you feel informed or political or intelligent. So it's not on the informed side. So it's definitely on the entertainment side. But it's also um, if you're a film fan and if you like watching comedy rather than here's a 20 second video about a cat falling over. You know what I mean? So not to be self-deprecating, but these are the things that make people share stuff. So figure out, um, is what I'm making shareable? And if not, is there any ways that I can make it more shareable so that people instantly go, yep, bing. Because I know what you're thinking, sharing stuff is really easy. And it is, it takes seconds. It takes two seconds to click on the button. Um, and it's frustrating when people don't. I know, I felt it. I, I felt the feeling of, why aren't people sharing this? It's so easy. You know, it, it's like sharing it, you have to 
you know, walk 20 miles with, with a backpack on your back. No, you just click the mouse once. It's done. You've shared it. So why aren't people doing it? Who knows? Who knows why people don't? But this is the point of this little section is just don't rely on it. Find other ways. When we come back to the, to the first point, which is do your research. You know what I mean? Find those ways to get your video out there. Because the old thought of, I'm going to put it on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and I'll get 500,000 hits or whatever, just doesn't work anymore. It has to be a more targeted, researched, focused approach, more planned if you actually wanna build and get your video out there. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do right now. Find that path, try and do that research constantly and grow in my numbers if I can. If I can't, then the, uh, the small amount of people that watch it, my small audience, Hopefully you will like it and that's the way it will be. But if I'm striving to grow, then these are the things I think will help me and hopefully you as well get your videos out there to more people. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I've been Mark on Life. Um, as I said, the next week's episode of Real Perspectives will be the last one of the year. And it will be the last one of this series. And then series two will be in the new year. And so the last episode will be, of course, a Christmas episode. I'm not going to say anything else quite yet because I'm still in the process of uh, figuring it all out. But I promise you it will be a fun one. And hopefully you will enjoy it. Uh, I'll put links to all the previous episodes in social media this week. So anybody that hasn't caught up on Real Perspectives can watch it from the beginning. Um, and have an amazing week. Have a fantastic Christmas. That's enough for me. Speak to you soon.